Let's look at how to solve a relativistic velocity problem. So this is a problem where the velocities would add more to be more than the speed of light, uh, but we can't have that. Or even if they were to get very close to the speed of light, it'll still affect uh, what we would measure. So a relativistic gun shoots a relativistic bullet with a velocity of 0.8c. Uh, however, the shooter is riding on a relativistic train which has a velocity of 0.5c. How fast would the bullet appear to be traveling to an observer on Earth? So I like to draw diagrams for these ones. So here's my train. Okay, The train is traveling with a velocity of 0.5c. as observed by a person on Earth. Okay, so they're looking at this thing. Um, but I'm standing on the train and fire a bullet out of the gun. And that bullet has a velocity of 0.8c. Now what's that measured with? That's measured with respect to uh, me being at rest. Even though I'm on a train traveling, I don't notice that. I just notice me being at rest and I notice the forward motion here. Okay. So the equation we're going to use is big V equals V1 plus V2 over 1 plus V1 V2 over uh, C squared. So it's important to identify what V1, V2, and V are. So big V is the observed velocity uh, by an outside observer. So that's what I'm looking for, right? How fast would it appear to observer on Earth? We're solving for V, okay? V1 is the velocity... Um, the, the relative velocity of the object, so with respect to whatever we're looking at. So in that case, it's the bullet's velocity. How fast does the object appear to go with reference to whatever was doing the thing? So I fired the bullet out at 0.8c, so it looks like it's going 0.8c relative to my position, so that's what v1 is. V2 is going to be what that object's velocity is relative to some outside observer. Well, I'm on the train and I'm traveling at 0.5c relative to the person on Earth observing me. So then if we were doing this normally on Earth, we would take 0.8c and 0.5c, add them together, get 1.2c, but we can't get that. We can't get a number that's larger than the speed of light. And I want to ease a little bit of your worry about getting V1 and V2 mixed up, it won't matter whether you add V1 and V2 or add V2 and V1, you'll get the same number. And if you multiply V1 and 2 or 2 and 1, you'll get the same answer. So as long as you don't get V mixed up, then you should be fine uh, regardless. You've got to be careful with the math, but um, as far as the setup goes, you should be fine. So plug in the numbers in, so we get V equals V1, which is 0.8C plus V2, which is 0.5C, over 1 plus 0.8C times 0.5C over C squared. So the first thing to do is to add 0.8C and 0.5C. That's 1.25C. Sorry, 1.2C. My bad. No, 1.3C. Gosh, look at me doing math all wrong. 1.3c. Woof. See, it's Thanksgiving. It's not my fault. Um, so then we do 1 plus, and now we got to multiply uh, 0.8c and 0.5c. So uh, 0.8 times 0.5 will be 0.4. And c times c is c squared. So we get 0.4c squared over c squared. And yes, those c squareds will cancel. That gives me 1.3c over 1.4. Divide 1.3 and 1.4 from each other. Leave the c alone, though. That gives me 0 0.2, or sorry, 0.93c. And there's my answer. How fast would the person on Earth see them going? The person on Earth would see the bullet traveling at 0.93C.
And that's not just how fast it would look to them, that's how fast they would actually physically measure it to be if they were using like a radar gun or a speedometer or something like that. Okay, there you go, last example.